This is an AQA GCSE chemistry question and it's based around quantitative chemistry, so amount of substance, and also chemical reactions. So I'm going to recommend you try it and then review the answer once you've had a go, pausing as you go. So here's parts A and B. Here is part C. And finally, here's part D. And you can see this is an eight mark question in total. So going back to part A, we've got here copper two oxide and copper one oxide. Um, and we're investigating what happens when they are in tube A heated. And then in tube B, we have a drying agent. The method, we're going to weigh the empty tube A, add some of the oxide of copper to tube A, weigh tube A and the oxide of copper, weigh tube B and the drying agent, pass the hydrogen through the apparatus, light the flame at the end, heat tube A for two minutes, re-weigh tube A and the contents, and repeat until the mass no longer changes. We then re-weigh tube B and the contents, and repeat that with different masses of the oxide of copper. Now what we've got here for part A suggests one reason why step eight is needed. This is the idea of continually checking to see that the mass no longer changes. That's to make sure that all of the copper oxide has reacted. We know that when the mass stops changing, the reaction has gone to completion. And why must the excess hydrogen be burned off? You can see that we're doing that in step five. We're lighting the flame at the end. Well, the fact we're lighting the hydrogen actually helps us to get the answer. We don't want the hydrogen to escape to the surroundings. And the reason for that is that it's a flammable gas. Moving on to part C, determine the mass of copper and the mass of water produced in this experiment using the table. So you've got to go through and find the relative information. I'm highlighting the figure so we can see that in tube A, tube A when empty was 105.72 and tube A and contents after six minutes, this is after the oxide of copper has been heated until the mass doesn't change, was 114.38. That tells us there were 8.66 grams of copper left within there. In terms of the water, we're looking at what happens in tube B, the drying agent, where it's actually gone up by 2.45 grams. This has captured the water as it's escaping and it's held it within there with the drying agent. So 2.45 grams as the mass of water. And finally for part D, teacher repeated the experiment with a different sample, found that the oxide of copper produced 2.54 grams of copper and 0.72 grams of water. We're given the two equations, we're given the relative atomic masses. So how do we determine which is the correct equation? Which one of these copper oxides, Cu2O or CuO, we used? Well, the first thing that I would always recommend is that if you're given a mass of something and you can find its relative atomic mass, work out the number of moles. In this case, you can see that my moles of copper, 2.54 grams, divided by the 63.5, means that I've made, 60, I've made 0.04 moles of copper. If I then do the same with the water, 0.72 divided by 18, the 18 is from one oxygen at 16 and two hydrogens at one each, I've also made 0.04 moles there. Now that means that for every mole of copper, I've made one mole of water. I've then got to go back to my equation and find which of those reflects the fact that I'm making one mole of copper for every mole of water. And equation one actually has a two to one ratio, as we can see from the two Cu plus H2O. Whereas equation two does have the one to one ratio. That means we can be confident that the correct equation is equation two. That takes us to the end of the question. Thank you for listening.